That barn door creates a ton of downforce. Let him drive. <laughs> Let him drive? Yeah, man, let's do this. I really wish you could tell me what I'm doing. Welcome back to Garage Tours. I'm your host, Chris Forsberg, and this week we head out to Phoenix, Arizona to meet up with Brian Hosford in his dirt sprint car garage. It's really cool to see these grassroots drivers prepare for the Saturday night races. They're working day jobs to fund their racing addiction, and I can totally relate to that. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's 11 p.m. and still 100 degrees outside, but it's finally cooling down enough for these guys to hit the garages. We're here at Brian Hosford's Sprint Car Shop. You've probably never heard of them, but just like the thousands of other racers who are working day jobs to support their racing careers, he's out here late at night turning wrenches to get his car ready for this weekend's race. Hello. Hey! What's up? How you doing? Brian, what's going on, man? Chris, how you doing? Yeah, thanks for having us. Hey, glad you guys stopped by. This yeah. is where the magic happens. It's not glamorous. <laughs> is this your but bedroom? It does, yeah, it kind of. I pretty much live here. But it's not glamorous, but it gets the job done. So here it is, Chris. This is our uh, 360 sprint car. We run uh, on dirt with the USAC 360 division. Um, pretty similar to things you're familiar with. This thing's got mm -hmm. roughly 700 horsepower. Okay. Weight ratio with the drivers, uh, 1,450 pounds. A little bit more <laughs> aggressive than uh, what you drifters might be used to. Yeah, that's but like some 1,200 of the same, pounds less than us. But some of the same <laughs> concepts. We use methanol to fuel this bad boy. Um, it's pretty simple though. There's no battery, no alternators. You don't turn a key to start this thing. No transmission, no, no shifter. No. And, so that's uh, how these things get so light. They cut off all that extra fat. <laughs> uh, the fuel pump, the power steering pump, simply runs onto the backside of the camshaft. Wow. Um, direct drive, so the, the drive shaft is actually out of a yoke out of the back of the motor into the rear end where there's one drive gear. You simply put this thing in one gear, get a bump start from an old 1985 and Bronco, and we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things that everybody notices about these sprint cars is how huge these rear tires are. It's kind of ridiculous. It is kind of ridiculous, but they do serve a purpose. And you might notice that the car is kind of leaning. It's a little off side. set here. And you even have both shoes on. It's not that you're leaning either. <laughs> um, these tires play a purpose, it's uh, referred to as stagger. Uh, we race in uh, dirt ovals, yep. and this stagger, depending on track conditions, will vary throughout the night. Like you, where you might go through about 14 or 16 sets of tires of uh, drift weekend. A little bit. We have to have about the same amount of tires, except for it's that various uh, stagger change throughout the evening. So different sizes, you're saying, to yep. help with the drive? Help with the drive or entry That's into crazy. the corner. All right, this cockpit's looking pretty busy, though. It's it's the drive shaft running right between your legs, right? Kind of. <laughs> that is a, the torque tube. The drive shaft runs right into that torque tube, so there is okay. some protection. So it's not spinning. It is not okay. spinning. Right. It does move, and that's what helps square the back of the car to the front of the motor plate. Mm. But we do have our fuel shutoff systems in there. The steering wheel is detachable, probably just like Good. your drift car. Sure is. Um, our ignition switch, our tack, our mag box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The safety seats, five-point harnesses. Doesn't look too safe. It looks you know, scary to me. It's comfortable though, you should try and get in. Oh. I can do that. Right. Wait, over the top or through the side? Uh, you could probably We're skinny going over as the you top. are. Yeah, you got it. Almost got it. There you go. There it is. Oh. <sighs> there it is. Oh my God. It's like driving a school bus. <laughs> yeah, big yellow school bus right here. You do have all your, your switches there as fuel as far as fuel shut off. And so the fuel goes switch. right in this general region? Yep, fuel goes right Perfect. into this. Fuel pump is right between your legs as well. Fuel pump's down there, even better. The ignition within a foot of fuel, perfect. Everything's safe, it's tight. <laughs> feel, feel safe. It's the long hours of the shop, double checking everything. <laughs> So obviously you guys are putting a ton of effort into these cars. I mean, you got a primary car and it looks like you got a bunch of other cars. How much effort would you say you're putting into this program? Well, I've always been told that podiums start on Sunday. Racing in Saturday night, Sunday it's at the car wash, it's unloading and it's start preparation for the following so weekend. So you need to prep that front bumper there. 
Yeah, we kind of got into somebody the other night. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what happens, right? Uh, but yeah, we have to have got a spare car ready at all times. Uh, nice. Unfortunately, in this sport, you never know what's going to happen, so you got to be prepared at all times. So I see you got a couple of spare frames over here, too. Are you guys flipping these often? Not often, but you do got to be prepared. Uh, there's two kinds of sprint car drivers, unfortunately. Ones that have flipped and ones that will. So uh, <laughs> we do got everything it takes to finish a, a season and go after a championship, which we all strive for. Nice. We even got our good support group. All right, so this is what most people think of when you're saying sprint cars, the big wing cars. And this is an ASCS 360 wing sprint car. Yeah, it's got that barn door on the roof. That barn door creates a ton of downforce. Oh yeah. Let him drive. Let him drive. Yeah, you heard it. Let's do this. What about this one? We might be able to talk Kyle into letting you drive this bad boy. I bet we could. Ready? I'm ready, man. I really wish you had a passenger seat so you could tell me what I'm doing, but uh, <laughs> I'll just wing it. You'll be just fine. I'll just wing it. Get it? Come on. I That's got it. That's great. That is great. turning with the throttle and that's just something that you're kind of kind of accustomed to doing. Yeah. It's rolling in, let the car get situated and then just rolling out of the throttle a little bit and back into it rather than spiking the grass. Gnarly, dude. These things have so much grip. It's crazy. Like, you can't get this thing to burn tire. It's just hooked up the whole time. I saw the white flag out, so I tried to like really get a good last slab, and I, I overcooked it into into three, and that's why I just shut it down. But ah, I don't need to. <laughs> We're done. We're yeah. good. <laughs> Those cars are so fast. It's like strapping yourself to an 800 horsepower engine and letting it rip. Thanks to Brian and his crew for trusting me to take it for a few laps. See you next week on Garage Tours.